guys, welcome to my talk show, Raising Greatness, where I interview you guests to find out what led them down their path to success. I'm your host, Nicholas Buwama. Today's guest has only been in the NFL for going on three years. But he's making moves both on and off the field. When he's not being defensive tackle for the New Orleans Saints, he's playing defense in his community by volunteering and helping many charities. Today's guest is the awesome Taylor Stalwart. Welcome to my show, Taylor. I'm so excited to have you here because you're a football player and I love sports. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm very honored to be on your show, man, and be able to sit down and I'll finally be able to talk to you and get to know you and, the, and you also get to know me. Well, my first question is, what is it like to play in the NFL? Is it hard? It's, it's actually a dream come true, like waking up every single day, being able to do something that you love, being able to be around a bunch of great guys and just going out there on Sundays, Thursdays, Mondays, depending on whatever you play, like just being able to, just say, oh, wow, I'm in the NFL, like, playing for this wonderful team. Like, it's a great feeling. Like, it always, like, it's just a goal that I achieve, but so many more other goals to achieve. And what, is it hard? It's very hard working. Like, you got to work hard no matter what. Like, from the – even in high school, even when you're little, like, all the way up, you got to work hard. But it's a very hard working job. I wouldn't say it's hard, but it's a very hard working job. It's more of a, you know – it's, it's physical and mentally part, but the mentally aspect of it runs higher than the physical part. Wow. So you say it's hard. I, I would actually think it was easy, and I do want to become a football well, probably a football player. I, don't, I really don't know. I know. I, hey, look, achieve whatever goals you want to achieve, man. I believe in you. Okay. Well, my – my next question is, your position is a defensive tackle. Can you explain to us what a defensive tackle does? Okay, so the defensive tackle is basically the first line of a defense. So you have your defensive tackle, that's the first line. Then you have your second line of defense, that's the linebackers. Then you have your third line, it's the safeties. So I play defensive tackle. We don't want the ball to get to the linebackers or the safeties. So our job is to stop the offensive players from getting to them. Hmm. Oh, wow. That sounds like a really fun job. Oh, no, it's very fun. What's your favorite position? Uh, my favorite position, I say, is a wide receiver. Mm. Oh, so you quick. <laughs> yeah. See, <laughs> I feel you on that. Luckily enough, um, <laughs> I won't be able to drop back in coverage and have to guard you. <laughs> well, my next question is, how many hours do you train a day? So, basically... A day I probably train four to five hours a day, but that's just uh, the work that I put in. That's not even the aspect of the recovery time because the recovery aspect of the game is also very important too because you want to take care of your body. Yes, you want to put in the work. You want to do whatever it takes to make you the best performer out there on the field, but you also have to take care of your body, and that's the main thing. That goes a long way with you know treating your body right, eating the right things, you know drinking the right stuff, cutting all the bad stuff out of you. So. Wow. So when you, when you guys go to train, you guys like, you guys love to train? Oh, yes. Yes. It's very hard working, though. Like, it's very, it, the, the work that you put in, like, very, you know, you get a lot out of it. But just going in there at the aspect of just going around, being around a bunch of new guys and, like, great guys and learning different things from them and, seeing what, oh, what they doing, something that you can add to your game and you also give something to them that they can add to their game. So basically, it's, it's a fun thing. It's a fun experience. That sounds like a very fun job. So when you guys <laughs> get on the field, you guys are, like, excited and... Oh, yes. Like, get chills through your body, you know, coming through the tunnels, you know, running, seeing all the fans out there, people screaming, you know, it just it, it brings you chills to your body, you know. It just gets you pumped, gets you ready for the game. Wow. Well, my next question is: When you were young, did you always want to become a football or an NFL player? No, 
I did not. I didn't even think I'd be playing football. Like, my first passion was baseball. That's my first love. Like, grew up loving baseball, playing baseball my young years. Like, I never really – I only played football once when I was younger, and it really wasn't for me. So, I was like, man, baseball was my true passion, my true love. So, what? Then, so, you didn't – you didn't like to um, play football, but did you like like to watch the games or anything? Mm-hmm. You didn't. It's crazy. I didn't like to watch the games either. And like I'm from Mobile, Alabama, and like the two teams that always come on was the Atlanta Falcons and the Saints. And I was that. I was rather like saying, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just watch baseball or I'm gonna just pay attention to baseball. I really wasn't like big into football growing up. So, if you weren't football player, what would you choose as your career? Would it be baseball or? Yeah, baseball. Hmm. Most definitely baseball. Well, baseball really sounds like a fun job. And so you were basically into sports, mainly, when you were young? Um, when I was younger, I was, I was into a lot of things, like different things. My parents kept me in a bunch of different stuff, like um, the choir. I, as a young and I used to always, I used to be in the choir at my grandma's church. Um, I used to always used to be so in tune with like the drums, like the drums and piano. I used to, I never learned how to play it, but I always wanted to know how to play it. Like, because in some of my favorite movies, like the five part beats, I used to watch the guys playing the drums and the piano. And I'm like, man, that's cool. So since you loved baseball a lot, uh, did you ever have anybody that you looked up to? Or like? Um, well, being from Mobile, Alabama, one of the hometown heroes was like Hank Aaron. So a guy like him, you know, pay, like one of the guys that kind of paved the way for us African-Americans in baseball and Satchel Paige, another guy like that. But growing up, my favorite player was Manny Marais. They played for the Boston um, for the um, Red Sox, and then you went to the Dodgers. That was my favorite player. <laughs> so, uh, who encouraged you the most, like, to follow your dreams? Who encouraged you? I want to say my whole family, basically. Like, my whole family, like, support me no matter what. Like, whatever decision I want to make or whatever decision that I want to go or if I want to take this part – or do something like this, like, I know that they're going to have my support no matter what. Because the end game, they want to see me, whatever I want to do, give it my all, no matter what. And I know that they're going to be behind me to support me. So, your family is very supportive, I see. Yes, So is mine. So, that's something that we have in common. Hey, hey, that's what's up, man. You know, you got to have a good, strong team behind us, bro, to keep us pushing. Let's discuss your philanthropy work. You work a lot with your community on different charitable projects. One project I love was when you and your team collaborated with Uri for LA Day, where you built a ramp for Mr. Jerry's home. Can you tell us more about that? Uh, yes. So basically the whole story was he was having health care problems, just had recently just had surgery, and his house was um just needed some repairs and he physically and his wife physically can, you know, do that a lot going around the house. And one of the main issues was the ramp and him not being able to walk up the ramp. That was like one of the main issues. Okay. We need to get him around so he can easily get him into the house and get him out the house. So just being out there and like able to do that and just contribute to just that little part, like it really like makes a difference, make you feel like, Oh wow. Like, you really make a change because, like, if you really look at it, like, someone like that don't have all the tools or don't have, like, the necessities to get those certain things done. But for a group of guys that come out there, you know, just all with the same one goal and just help somebody else out and just being able to put a smile on their face, like, that really what it's all about. Like, just the community aspect about it. Just doing your part out here to put a smile on a person that, you know, Never would ever thought that oh, it's people like y'all would be out here helping me. Well, that's awesome, and I love that. Well, I have a nonprofit called Books Without Borders, where I donate books to kids in underprivileged communities. And right now, I'm helping a school in Ghana fill its library with 
books, and computers. And I hear that you do um, you do help some nonprofits. So I think that we could probably collaborate and you oh, yes. part of my nonprofit. Oh yes, most definitely. I'll be honored to be part of your nonprofit. That would be awesome. Let's take a moment to talk about Wild, wild Card Wednesday. Mm. So, do you love to cook? Because I heard that's what Wild Card Wednesday was about. Yes, I, I do have a passion for cooking. I really do have a passion for cooking. Well, maybe when you retire from football, you could probably be a, a chef. You never know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think about a chef part, but having my own couple restaurants out here, yeah, that aspect of it, yes. But being a chef, um, I don't know. I don't know about that one, but... My passion for cooking, I, I really enjoy cooking. And you've made so many good dishes. So out of mm -hmm. all of the good dishes you've ever made, what do you say is the best? The best. Ooh. I have to say recently, um, I made, um, it was this dish that I made. It was a lamb dish. So basically it's a lamb dish and I added, I had cauliflower rice on the side, cauliflower rice on the side, and um, lemon pepper seasoned asparagus tips. But I want to say the lamb is probably one of my favorite, like, things to eat, honestly. Wow, your lamb? And I saw you make some, and it looked really good. And Thank you. And you love to, like, you like to put seasoning on it? Well, I actually just interviewed a chef called, his name is Chef Jannard, and he has oh, wow. his own line of seasoning, and I think you should buy some. I think I'll oh, ship this one. Okay, I'll definitely look into it. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Well, a question that we all want to know. Is the NFL season starting on time this year? I'm waiting just like you is, man. Just like everybody else, I'm waiting. I'm anxious to see what's going to happen, man. But I feel like it's going it's, I feel like it's going to start on time, but there's going to be a lot of different things that we'll have to do to, you know, take care of one another and also take care of the fans because we are in a uh, pandemic right now. And, you know, we're just trying to – everybody's waiting on sports to come back. Like, that's what everybody's yeah. talking about. But, you know, it's, it's – it, I feel like things going to get back to normal, but the precautions and the things that have to go about it, like, it's going to be a little bit different. But I feel like we'll start back on time. Well, to wrap this up, since I love learning, since I love learning new words, can you leave me with your favorite word? Hmm. Hmm. My favorite word. Ah. Oh, that's a tough one right there. My favorite word. How about How about you give me a favorite word? How about that? My favorite word is formidable, cause I say I'm formidable. And formidable means you're rough and tough. Mm. You're also quick with it, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Can you explain? You're smart. Thank you. You're very smart and very intelligent, young man. Thank you very much. No, no, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for being a guest on my show. And to everyone else, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> to learn more information about Taylor Stallworth, you can visit NewOrleansSaints.com. Thank you for watching this episode of Raising Greatness. And thank you to all the indie authors who donated their books to our initiative, To Ghana With Love. I pray your blessings overflow for your generosity. To everyone else, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.